to the Right Way Church, 4300 Ramona Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We thank you for joining in with us on today. We thank you for joining in with us on this past Wednesday, 8 p.m. Bible study of the Right Way Church. And we thank God for you continually, continuously giving to this ministry, www.rightwaydallas.com. We encourage you to give right now. We encourage you to certainly give today. We encourage you to stop by for drive up prayer and giving each and every Sunday from 11.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. Drive up, stay in your cars, wear your mouth covers, and we will wear ours. We will keep safe social distance, pray for you, and give you the opportunity to give. Or perhaps you prefer to mail your giving in. Again, you can mail it to 4300. Ramona Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216, safe, secured, mailbox that is monitored and locked, and so we will get it by the grace of God. So we love you today. We are so grateful to see the last Sunday in the month of January, the first month in this year of 2021. Amen. We dare not take it for granted that the Lord has brought us thus far. And so we are excited on today. We're praying for all of you that are sick or going through right now, whatever it may be. Our hearts and our prayers go out to you. Those that are experiencing death in your families, we are praying for you and we love you. And I want to encourage you today that I'm a living witness that God will get you through this. Amen. He's able. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. And so we just love you on today. We say hello to all of the members of the Right Way Church, all of our friends and guests that are tuning in and watching on today. We are grateful uh, for you doing that on today. And we're excited about what God is going to do. We've got a special blessing on today. Uh, one of my favorite preachers. Amen. Evangelist Sylvia Shackelford is going to uh, preach for us on today. Amen. Amen. And so we're excited about it. That's a surprise to many of you. Amen. And so I thank God for you. And we know that God is going to use the woman of God in a mighty way. Amen. Amen. And we are just truly grateful. She's a great friend of the family and also a friend and supporter of the Right Way Church. We claim her as one of our own, and so I'm excited to hear what God has uh, given her to share with us on today. We thank God for Lady Natasha running the, the controls here. Amen, amen. We thank God for Big Mike on the drums, Brother Justin on the bass guitar, and Reverend Tim Howard on the organ. We thank God for Brother Glenn always being the first man in and the last man out. Amen. And he was here to greet amen our, our people on today as always. And so we are truly, truly Grateful, Amen. Not going to prolong the time. Amen. We are excited about Evangelist Sylvia Shackerford being with us on today. We bless the memory of her late husband, Pastor Shackerford. Amen. And we thank God for her pastor over at the Union Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you for sharing her with us as well. Amen. We love everybody. Thank God for you. Amen. And we welcome you to this Facebook Live service of the Right Way Church. We've got folks listening in California, watching in California, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Baltimore, Maryland. Amen. We love y'all. We thank God for you. And I'm going to see you again on Wednesday. Amen. 8 p.m. Bible study. If not, we have a great time this past Wednesday. Amen. 
we were reminded that struggles lead to success. Amen. And so it all comes together. Amen. And so we are so excited about God blessing Lady Natasha and I uh, with an addition to the family. And we revealed, amen, on this past Wednesday that it's a baby boy. Amen. Y'all know I'm happy. Lord have mercy. Never would have made it. I ain't gonna sing it today. But that's my testimony. Never could have made it without you. That's the Lord. I would have lost it all. But now I see you were there. what God has brought you through. Never could have made it without How many have that testimony? I would have lost it all But now I see you were there for me This is my testimony I can say I'm stronger. That's what I've been through, y'all. I'm wiser. I'm better. Much better. When I look back, I never look back over what he brought you through. Just let 
that resonate. Natasha showed up carrying my son, Evangelist Shaq Kutchi, just messaged me that the baby was moving to that music. That's my son, y'all. Yes. Amen. Yes. To God be the glory. I'm going to pray before this great woman of God comes up. Going to hear what God has in store for us today by way of evangelist Sylvia Shackle. But let us pray. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus, standing in need of a word from you. Lord, bless your servant, Reverend Shackleford, on today. You, sir, for your glory. Speak through her, Lord, yet at the same time speak to her. Have your way in this house on today. Prepare our hearts and our minds to hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. together and receive this great woman of God. Good morning, Good morning. to all that's present here at the Right Way Church here in Dallas on Ramona. I say first that I praise God for just being alive this morning, for his blessings and for how he's kept us and how he's yet keeping us. So we say to God, be the glory. And then this morning, I first want to give a respect to Pastor Kevin Bush, pastor of this dynamic church, the Right Way Church, and First Lady Natasha, First Lady Ann, some. <laughs> and I also like to thank those who are here, the musicians. I told them that I tune in on Sundays and and everything, and I really am inspired by the message and the music. Bless you. So I want to at least say to my, uh, give respect to those who have made this possible. And then I would like to honor the founder of this church, one of the living founders, Amen. Mother Brenda Bush, known here. Amen. But I know her as a dynamic woman of God, Amen. a friend of mine through the years, Sister Brenda Bush. Amen. And friends are people that stay with you when you're going through. That's right. Amen. And in the turbulent times of my life, and yes, the death of my husband, and uh -huh. the uh, surgery with breast cancer, yes, Sister Bush was always there encouraging, coming by, sending funds, praying for me. Yeah. So as a founder of this church, and I want to respect the memory of the late Deacon James Bush. Yeah. Yeah. So we thank God for the Bush family. For all of those here, and that I greet you in the name of Jesus, I bring you greetings from the Union Missionary Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas, on Polk Street, Amen. where I am a member. That's my first church, Amen. <laughs> and right where is my second church. Amen. Pastor uh, Charles Martin, a dynamic pastor, and I'm Amen. under his leadership, and the members there at Union, I know that I greet you from the Union Church. Amen. So this morning, we're going to get right into the Word. I just thank God for everything, and I do want to thank those sisters who I text on yesterday 
to pray for me, all of those prayer warriors and prayer partners at Union Baptist Church. Uh -huh. So I thank God for you. Praise Let's just have a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come right now thanking you for your divine blessings. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you that you woke us up this morning, enclosed in our right mind, Lord, the activity of our limbs. Oh, Father God, you gave us a mind set to come this way, to say a word of encouragement. So, Father, we just thank you this morning. I thank you for my pastor and all of those who are praying for me right now. Yes, Lord. That your word will go forth, Lord, and that no flesh be glorified. So I pray that you would give me clarity of the word, Lord, as I give today to encourage those, even in the Facebook land, those watching, those tuning in by whatever means of your device, that God is yet God. I yes. thank you, Lord, as I deliver the word that you would word my mouth. Let me say exactly what you would have me to say to bless not only the others, but bless me as well. Yes. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. As we just have a few minutes this morning, we're going to get right into the word. And for those of you who are in Radio Land, I'm going to ask that you would, uh, even in the Facebook world, yes. that you would open your Bibles as we're going to talk today from just a, a familiar scripture, and then we're going to, thank you, Reverend. Today, with the help of the Holy Ghost, I would like to talk about trusting God for the impossible. Amen. And so those that, have, Pastor, you can just say it with me. Trusting God. Trusting God. For the impossible. For the impossible. And our scripture reading today is going to come from a couple of familiar passages of scripture. All right. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. That's good. And it reads, trust in the Lord mm -hmm. with all your heart. Yes, Lord. And lean not unto your own understanding. Mm -hmm. And in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Yes. And then another scripture I'd like to just put in up front, Luke 1 and 37. For with God, nothing will be impossible. With God, nothing will be impossible. Amen. Now this morning I asked the Lord to just give me a message of hope. Yes. To remind and encourage the saints of God. You know, we pray for everybody else, but we need to be encouraged as believers of God. Amen. In difficult times of life, no matter what we face or encounter, it can really become overwhelming. Yes, it can. And it totally looks impossible to cross, to endure, mm -hmm. or come out with the victory. Yes. Well, let me put a, a nail in that point. Right. God can do the impossible. He is faithful, and his word always stands. Yes. As believers, we know he, all of us know Hebrews 11 and 1. We were raised with that, mm -hmm. even when we weren't saved, Reverend Bush, right? Yes. In BTU, yes. we learned Hebrews 11 and 1. Amen. Reminds us that, see, if we're going to trust God to do the impossible, we've got to have faith in him. Amen? Amen. Faith, Reach now. 11 and 1, Hebrews says, faith is the substance, uh -huh. just a little bitty thing, <laughs> of things hoped for uh -huh. and the evidence of things not seen. Yes. Now, what is trust? All right. Webster defines trust as a firm belief in something or reliability, a truth, a strength in something or someone. All right. So if we got to trust somebody, that means we got to have a relationship with them. Amen? Amen. Now, you know, when I got married, my husband asked, you know, at that time he said he wanted to marry me. I said to myself, can you take care of me? Amen. <laughs> Well, now, I, I, I'm trusting him I'm to do what he said, amen? Right. Amen. Well, we got to have, so we had a relation. That's right. So if we got to trust God, saints, we got to continue to have a relationship with him. That's right. And when you have a relationship with someone, and it's a close relationship, yes. you can call on that person in the time of need. Right, Reverend. So are we trusting God? Yeah. Who are we trusting in? Huh. Ourselves? My God. Our bank accounts, my God. our friends, hmm. we're trusting in God. Yes. The almighty sovereign God. The I am. That I am. Yes. The everlasting God. Yes. The one that's going to be here when the world is gone. Yeah, so we're trusting in God. Yes. 
Well, we got to admit this pandemic. I'm going to get to my, I'm going to get to it in a minute. Take your time. We got to admit that this pandemic has really challenged a lot of us. Yes, it has. Now, just because we saved and sanctified and feel, it doesn't exempt us from trouble. You're right about it. It doesn't exempt us from getting sick. That's right. It doesn't even exempt us. From getting the pandemic, yeah, that virus. But you know, I've been trusting God, and thank God, it has not touched or uh, invaded my body. Hallelujah. Hospitals are overwhelming with patients, mm -hmm. and first responders doing all they can to help meet the demands of this crisis. Yes. Oh, uh, its businesses are shutting down for long periods of time. People have lost income. Uh -huh. Unemployment is, is, I'm just giving you some real facts. That's right. Unemployment is at its highest peak yes. that it's ever been. Uh -huh. Marriage is in trouble. My God. Families losing their homes. Yes. Losing their possessions because of the lack of income. Help us. But I'm here to remind you, if you got a relationship with the Lord, you need to trust in the Lord. Because he's able yes, he to do the impossible. Yes, you preach and pray. And then you know we got corruption in the government. Deborah was 
that she totally trusted God. Yes. How did she do it? Well, Luke 1 and 37 says, with God, hey, nothing, say nothing, 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 nothing will be impossible. Hallelujah. That every day, we, a lot of us are not working. A lot of us are retired. Uh -huh. But every day we work demanding jobs. Yes. And we take care of our families. Yes. We may not have had the title that Deborah had, but her life demanded a lot from her each day. And it does demand a lot for us, even in Facebook land. Yeah. Settling disputes. You know how children get into problems? Uh-huh. And you got young couples married, and yes. they don't realize that, that the love bug ain't going to flow every day. Yeah, man. Ain't going to be hotty hotty every day. You're right about it. So you got to help settle disputes. That's right. Helping people with marriages. Uh-huh. And I'm not a pastor, but you'd be surprised at the folks That's that right. call me that want to talk about some different issues. That's right. But I'm going to always revert them back to what the Word says. My God, my if God. If you get the, don't tell them what I did. That's right. Tell them what God said do. That's right. He said, love husbands, love your wife yeah. as Christ loved the church. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But you know, most of the time we just love ourselves. My God. So we got to help people and encourage them yeah. and pray for them. And let them know that God can work it out. Yes, he can. But you got to pray yourself. Hallelujah. And you got to have a relationship with the Lord in order for things to work out. That's right. So Deborah, don't think that she didn't have a dysfunctional family. That's right. She had some problems just like a lot of us do. But hers was just bigger because of her position in society. Yeah. But I tell you what Deborah did. What Deborah did was fantastic and the word would back me up. Judges 4 and 4 and 14 says, Then uh, Barak was captain of the army. Uh -huh. and, and Barak, her husband, was really afraid to go out and fight the Caesarea, against Caesarea. Is and the truth is, he, he didn't want to go because he was afraid they didn't have enough men. That's right. They didn't have enough help. Uh -huh. How many times have we been in that situation? Lord, I don't have enough to make ends meet. That's right. But when you got a good wife, <laughs> you can have a good wife that's not trying to compete with you. Yeah, She's going to support you. That's right. And she'll lift you up to the Lord. Yeah. And in verse 15 of that, in that fourth chapter, it says, it says that Deborah encouraged Barak. See, she had a relationship with God. Go. This is the day that the Lord has given Sister Rhea into your hands. Yeah. That's a powerful statement. Yes, it is. A powerful statement. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? Barak went down to Mount Tabor with 10,000 men fought them. But look who was, who was encouraging him. Yeah. A woman of God. Oh my God. Take your time. That had a relationship. Uh-huh. And believed that God would do the impossible. Yeah. And in Judges 4 and 16, it said that all of the army of Caesarea fell dead at the edge of the sword. Not a man was left. That's, you go get your Bible and read it. Yes. Judges 4, 14 through 16, you read it. Say, what the man left? Did God do the impossible? My God. Yes, he yes. wiped out an army that was more powerful than Barak's army. But there ain't nothing, and that's not good ground, it's nothing more powerful than the word of God. So we know that Sister Rhea, he did flee. But he finally died. Uh -huh. As a, as a, as a what she did was put that peg in his head. Yeah. <laughs> and he died at the hands of a woman. So God can use whoever he wants to, when he wants to, but we got to have faith. Hebrews 11 and 1 says now, faith is the substance. Faith was back in Deborah's day. Uh -huh. Faith is in Shackleford's day. That's right. The substance of things hoped for. Yes, Lord. But he proved the evidence came out. I can do all. So to me, I think that Deborah had a poet. She was a prophetess. She must have already have known about Philippians 4 and 13. Yeah, <laughs> that must have come in with her spirit. I can do all things. That's right. Oh, woo, I can do all things. Preach, preach, preach. Through Christ who strengthens yeah, yeah. Just trust him and never doubt. Them old songs, we don't like to sing them no more. Yeah. Oh, it said trust him <laughs> and never doubt.
Sister Margie Heath uh -huh. of a Union Church called me 
laugh at you. And I said, look at God. Do it. Just a test of your faith. 